once you have your correlation coefficient, then you want to look at what that number is actually telling you. So if r is equal to zero or very close to it, then that means that there is a weak or non-existent relationship between the variables. So at that point, you would basically stop the whole correlation process since you don't think that they're um, correlated. Or if r is not equal to zero, then there's two possibilities for why that is. So it might be that the value of r that we got is high enough because there is a significant linear relationship between the variables. Or it could just be that the way it worked out with the random sample that we picked, uh, we ended up getting like a high R value just due to chance. Okay, that's always a possibility. So what we're gonna look at now is how we actually determine the significance of that correlation coefficient. So the way that we determine significance and in statistics is to test it. So we're going to do a hypothesis test um, in order to test the significance of the correlation coefficient. So this is a pretty easy hypothesis test um, in comparison to chapter 8 and chapter 9. Um, the null hypothesis, we're always going to state that rho equals 0. So in other words, what that means is that we're stating that there's no correlation between the two variables. And then the alternative is always going to be that rho is not equal to zero. Okay, so that statement is saying that there is a significant correlation between the two variables. Now, the nice thing about this test is you do not have to identify the claim. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that. And that's because we're always just kind of answering the same question. We're always trying to determine if there is a significant linear relationship between the variables. The other good thing about this test is that we're not going to do the traditional method at all. I actually think we don't do the traditional method the rest of the semester. I think it's the p-value method from here on out, um, but don't quote me on that. But for this, it's definitely the p-value method. So the place you're going to go in your calculator to get your p-value is linear regression t-test. So lin reg t-test. So example three says to test the significance of the correlation coefficient found in the previous example, and our level of significance, alpha, is 0 0.01. OK, so your first step for your p-value method is to state your hypotheses. So they're always going to be the same thing when you're doing this type of test. So your null hypothesis is that rho equals zero. Your alternative is that rho does not equal zero. And then step two is to get your p-value. So you're going to go to linear regression t-test. And then you do just want to make sure that you select the right sign when you're in there. So you'll go to stat, go over to tests, and then it's pretty far down. I think it's like F. So keep scrolling down until you see linear regression t-test. And then everything should be pretty much good by default. So you have your L1, L2, frequency is 1, don't touch that. Um, you're always just going to highlight the not equal to um, 0. And then calculate. And then fourth one down there, you can see your p-value is 0 0.0014 if you round it to four decimal places. So our p-value is 0 0.0014. And then step three, we know that we want to compare that with alpha. So that's the same that we're used to. So since 0 0.0014 is less than or equal to 0 0.01, that means that we decide to reject the null hypothesis. And then step four, this one does kind of change with this hypothesis test. So we're not going to use like one of our, our main four statements. Okay, we're going to say this a little bit different. So the null hypothesis, if you look back at your notes, what that states is that there is no correlation between the two variables. So if we reject that, then basically we're 
saying the alternative, which is that there is a significant correlation between the variables. Okay, and when we state our answer, we do want to be specific with it. So we'll say that there is enough evidence to conclude that there is a significant negative linear relationship between a student's final grade and the number of absences that a student has. So you got to have those three keywords in there. So significant, that shows that we actually did a hypothesis test and we determined that it's significant. Negative, we know because our R value was negative. And then linear, we know from looking at our scatter plot um, and seeing that it did kind of fall, our points did fall in a straight line. And if you like to um, read about this stuff, there is your textbook does go into a whole bunch more relationships about variables. It just kind of talks about them. You don't actually have to know it for this class. But if you like stats and you like reading about this stuff, um, you should go in your e-textbook and go to section 10.1 and you can read a bunch more about this stuff.